we got the some of the common terminologies correct for example um like um the development the growth and also differentiation okay we, then we also look at uh, or things that you measure when it involves with um crop growth analysis so today in continuation to that we are going to start with um, something very basic something very fundamental to the growth of the plant um, you see we know that plants all start um, as seeds okay i mean like that is a very brief or crude generalization but if, if we talk um, to anybody um, more or less they're going to see that uh, um, uh, that way and also see that plants start as a seed so we are going to have a look at the seed itself what seed is all about and the concept of dormancy and germination not to worry if again you keep seeing um, new words new terminologies and so on uh, because um, hopefully i will get um, uh, to to highlight to you um, the very um, simple and easily understood definition okay keep next to you the paper or whatever um, so that you can write down the, de the definition i know um, terminologies can be overwhelmed um, sometimes but um, you're a science student and like it or not many of these terminologies sounds very alien because they are quite ancient they come from the greek and latin words and also the combination of several languages okay so we're going to have a look at the um, um, sorry about this um, little window down here um, about the the general concept of the seeds and seeds germination i hope you can still recall from your botany lessons um, you did learn about uh, one of the plant organs namely flower correct so this is your flower so flower is the reproductive structure of a plant okay if the plant is flowering um, uh, like the angiosperm of course if the plants are not flowering you're not going to see this but since um, when we talk about crop we mainly deal with plants that are flowering so we use the representation um, here as you see now so you've got your plants and then the plants um, comprises the male and female part so this is your um, male part here this is the male part where you can find the enter and also um, the filament okay and then um, you're going to see the female part which is the stigma and the pollen tip okay and through the actions of um, pollination meaning that the transfer of the pollen from the male part to the female part the pollen that managed to land on the stigma will grow its pollen tube conveying the genetic material contained inside of it all the way down um, in search for the egg cells or the ovules okay once the um, egg cells manage to be fertilized a series of development will start to occur and this is how you are going to get your seed and very often your seed is going to be contained inside a structure called a fruit okay just like the example here okay yeah, and these seeds, uh, after it has matured enough, it can grow into uh, a plant and the cycle can start all over again. Okay. Um, so what was the purpose of um, having a seed? 
okay does it does it help um to um to have the seat or when it help to have a seat <clears throat> so the main idea is uh, for the propagation okay uh, meaning that it's a means of ensuring species continuum so through the action of reproduction and the resultant is the seeds and that is the measure or the way the plants can um, produce more progeny more baby plants okay so on the um, down bottom here on the right you're going to see that um, for seed propagation is actually advantageous because the plants um, need to um, to make it happen the fertilization the cross pollination to happen so the baby seed is going to have the genetic material from the mom and from the dad parent one and parent two so there is a crossover the genetic transfer um, occurring here and then you're going to get your seedling and this seedling here is going to be in some way uh, better than either of the parents because of this um, sharing and transfer of genetic material rather than if the plant is propagated through vegetative um, uh, propagation vegetative uh, means we use other parts than the seeds uh, part to propagate the plants because plant has that ability okay uh, so for example like this one here you have the plant you take off the cutting and then you plunge into the soil eventually um, the, the stem is going to have some rooting and it's going to bud and produce the plant just like this one but in terms of genetic makeup, it is basically a clone. And if the parent is not healthy, pretty much this one is going, not going to be healthy as well. But the seed, we have advantage over that. So it's going to be better than the parents. <clears throat> so seeds are very diverse, um, meaning that um, in nature, you're going to find seeds of many sizes okay so I, I like to mention this because this this one here the fact here is um, uh, in the uh, Guinness Book of Record so the smallest smallest um, seeds um, in plant kingdom is the orchid seeds one gram of orchid seeds can be million of seeds um, some orchids depending on the um, genus and species uh, can be easily 3 million seeds for one gram. So that is a lot. So this is um, the regular orchid um, that you see here. And then um, this is the seed here. Look how small it is. They look exactly like dust. Okay. And um, if you compare to the coconut, which can be as big as a ball or maybe bigger and super heavy okay so it looks very contrasting they are still plants but since they are in different um category of plants they have different ways uh in terms of seeds the puzzle and also a uh, different mechanism to transport the seeds but regardless of the size, whether it is as fine as a dust or as big as a ball, the motivation of seed is the same, to propagate the plant, to ensure species continuum. Okay, um, I'm, I'm trying to write something here, but the pen is not working. I do not know why, um, but it's all right. Um, uh, one just one second i just want to reconnect uh, my uh, tablet pen let's see whether this is going to work um. 
I I forgot something. Um, you should have reminded me actually. Um, we need to record this. Yeah, we should record this. How to record this? Um, there's no record button. Why there is no record button? Um, Oh, oh, are you are you recording now? Yeah, okay, all right, okay. Um, if you're recording, then that's fine. Um, I do not know why why the record button is not here. Yeah, yeah. Can you share with me um later the link to to that? Okay. Um, one moment. I just need to get the pen. Uh, correct. Uh, this is um the downside of having the online um class. Because things get funny very easily. Let's see, how do I connect this? That is, nope, that is HDMI, that's not it. is working so that's fine okay let's try again so good right okay okay can we continue sorry for that um slight interruptions um yeah my my computer got updated earlier today so things kind of funny now yeah i've got two monitor two screens but the other screen is showing something else but yeah that's all right uh, so um so, so these are the diversity among the seeds in the same kingdom the plant kingdom so they are different in terms of their appearance, in terms of their dispersal mechanisms, because seeds needs to adapt to survive in nature, and they have to deal in different environments. The conditions are not the same. Um, some seeds live um, on the, uh, the, the the ground, so some seeds are what we call as um, terrestrial. Terrestrial, meaning that um, they are grown on land. Some some seeds are, uh, you know, aquatic. Okay, like um, the lotus here, uh, this guy here. Some some seeds are uh, maybe growing on other um, plants. For example, the the epiphytic plant, epiphyte, um, like the um, Aspenemnidus, the the bird nest of uh, fern. Okay, so depending on the nature of the, the locations, the growth conditions, so we get the diversity of the seeds. Okay, so seeds are pretty much uh, important. Two, number one, protect the zygote. Zygote um, is uh, when two egg cells have combined. Okay, so when it's fertilized, we call it zygote okay so the zygote will grow and develop to form a new fruit and a new seed so during the process it needs to be protected from physical injury and also seeds pretty much have this uh, food reservoir okay so food um, reservoir you're going to do see later how it looks like before it becomes independent so um you can think of this function uh, in human like the um, amniotic bag in, in human and this um, store of food um, something like in human something like the um, the placenta the placenta and also the endometrium layer 
inside the human. So it's something equivalent if you are more familiar with human biology. Okay. And also the seeds um, provide um, the enclosure for the embryo. Okay, so this is it and this is the embryo. So this is the home for the embryo while it's growing, but while it's developing to remain dormant in survive harsh uh, environments. Okay, sometimes the seeds, um, it's not ready to germinate. It's not ready to to um, to have uh, to have it grown anywhere. So it stays dormant. So it needs a good home um, until the situation is perfect. And also for the dispersal, you can see that um, like the coconut tree, uh, it produced the coconut fruit. It looks big, but it still float in water. Why? Because in the coconut tree, there's a lot of air spaces okay so this helps with the dispersal of coconut um, fruits from one island to one uh, island okay if it's too big um, and dense it's going to fall but this guy here it's big so that's good when it's big lots of food can remain in there and it can travel very far and then grow as a new independent plant in a newly uh, found islet okay and also the seeds is uh, also needed to respond to environmental cue uh, because seeds um, uh, maybe at the at the cellular level got what we call as receptors receptors so you have many cells inside the seeds and each cells got on the surface of the cell, we got this antenna that we as known as um, receptors. So these receptors uh, will sense the cues or the signal before it is ready to germinate. Okay, so seeds is very important. So just because you look at the seeds lying around, you know, like you open your mom's fridge and then you find the mung bean, the green bean inside there. It stays there looking cold, looking alone. Doesn't mean that it's not alive. It's very much alive. Okay. It respires, even though it's very super slow, consume oxygen, produce CO2 and H2O, just like you. But at a much reduced and slow pace, okay? However, um, this mung bean here cannot stay in the fridge for uh, forever. It's going to have a finite lifespan and one day it's going to die too, okay? But not, not very immediately. It's going to be a while, okay? Um, so the question remains now, which seeds can remain viable for longer? Okay, um, it depends on the seed structure. Actually, so even though seeds is um, having a basic uh, structure, like you know, you have the seed here, and then you have the embryo here. Some seeds, um, uh, the the outer part of the seed is very hard, so the seeds can survive for a very long time. Okay, some seeds uh, have a rather soft um, uh, seed jacket uh, or seed skin so they're not going to survive for a very uh, long time right so it depends <clears throat> um, I I remember um, the um, a few years ago uh, I was working um, in, in a growth chamber growing plants artificially so one day this lady here um, brought the seeds uh, from um, Israel. Israel, you know Israel? Uh, we can't go here. So these seeds are the chickpea. The chickpea seeds. Um, I forgot what it's called in Malay. Um, something, some kacang. So this chickpea, um, she obtained from uh, an ancient civilization, okay? Uh, dated back to 5,000 years ago. Okay, long, long time ago. 
So 5,000 years ago, meaning that um, in terms of timeline, it's going to be 3,000 BC. Long time ago. So she grew this chickpea, and after some treatment, this actually alive. This chickpea, very much alive right next to where I was working that time. So that was very wonderful and to look at because uh, now they can know 5,000 years ago, you know, maybe probably around when Pharaoh was still around torturing the people, chasing the people across the ocean. This, the mother of this chickpea was still around. And uh, we can know what the past uh, looks like. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so um, yeah, it can be many, many thousands of years, how much it's, uh, it's going to last, and it can be like maybe 24 hours only. Okay, so it depends. Okay, so um, in general, tropical plants um, do not have the winter, so that there is no harsh season. So the seeds are usually um, uh, can can last uh, for, for a very short, short time, a few days, okay? Um, so these seeds, um, um, I'm not going to teach um, in details now, so the seeds, uh, usually we classify into the um, orthodox seeds, orthodox seeds, and also we have the recalcitrant seeds, recalcitrant. Recalcitrant is another word for stubborn. My spelling can be incorrect, so you can check that later. So orthodox seeds is something, um, seeds like um, the rice, meaning that seeds, when you dry the seeds, the seeds can remain dormant. Recalcitrant seeds is usually the fruit seeds, like the rambutan, the durian. Once they are dried, um, if you germinate them, they're not going to grow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so um, seeds can be viable or not, um, depending on... Uh, how long they are in storage, okay? So this is a, just a quick a way to determine seed viability. If you um, soak the seeds in the water, sometimes people even put uh, um, salt in here, yeah, to make the water slightly dense, yeah. So if the seeds is still sinking to the bottom, even though you put the salt in, you know, meaning that the water here is very dense, meaning that the seed is very much alive. And those who are floating, not very much alive. They are not viable. So you know, don't, don't waste your time and grow these seeds. Save a lot of time. Okay, let's look at the um, the general features of a seed. So this is a seed. Um, I know we have many types of seeds, but um, this is a, the general structure of it. So at the outermost layer, there is a like a jacket. Uh, we call it the, the seed coat or sometimes people uh, give a fancy name to it. They call it seed testa. So, yeah, it's the same thing as the seed coat here. And then um, inside the seed also, you're going to get your um, embryo, okay? Okay, embryo. And this is um, the result from the fertilization, um, the union of the male and female gamete. Then you got your zygote, your zygote grows and develop, then you're going to get your embryo here. And then you're going to get your um, food reserve, uh, the food store here. So in here, we have all the um, lipid, um, carbohydrate, vitamin, amino acids, and so on, okay, for, for, for the seeds uh, to be alive. So um, in, a, in human, this is, I mean, like the, ba the baby inside the human womb do not have um, the same concept as the food reserve because the mom keeps feeding on the baby, but we do have this. This is pretty much like our liver. Yeah, for the food reserve. Okay, so, and yeah, so these are the functions. Uh, you, you can um, have a quick look at, at that. Um, regardless of the species or type, all seeds um, comprises um, this uh, structure. <clears throat> What I would like to uh, highlight here now is the concept of uh, monocot and dicot plants. I hope you still remember that. Monocots are those with only one cotyledon. Remember cotyledon? Cotyledon? 
cotyledon is regarded as the baby leaf. It is not outside of the seed, it, it is inside the seed. So this is your seed. And when you do the cross section inside of the seed, you're going to find this structure here. And this is the cotyledon. So the cotyledon um, is actually um, the part of the embryo which has um, developed into a special structure. So um, in this um, embryo, you, you get um, this um, cotyledon, the apicotyl and hypocotyl. Apicotyl is actually the stem um, ab uh, the, the, the above the top part and hypocotyl it's the um the bottom part so this is why it helps to the latin for for a bit okay epi it's for the above or peripheral or and hypo means below Okay, so depending on the type of the plant, so this is the dicot cross section seed, and this is the monocot cross section. So the monocot, even though the components are the same, you got the the cotyledon and the uh, and the seed coat. However, you're going to see that um, they level as the endosperm, the food reserve here. This is the food reserve. So one might wonder, where is the food reserve for, for the dicot seeds? Is it not present? It is present. Actually, the food reserve for the dicot is actually part of the cotyledon. Yeah, the cotyledon kind of absorb the endosperm into itself. Yeah, and then become the food reserve. Um, two, in, two in one job. Okay, so enjoy sperm, the foreign plants, you got the dicot and monocots again, okay. and these are the examples. Okay, okay, uh, these are something to help uh, rec make you recall. I, I know I keep repeating this, but this is very important. You are going to have a look at this later on. If you go on your own, have a walk, have a, um, a, a jog or something, when you look at the plant, these are the broad classification of the plants, the monocot and dicot plants. So monocot plants are those plants that are having the, uh, the linear leaf. And when you look at the venation of the leaf, they look um, like this. They have the parallel veins uh, compared to the dicot, which have these uh, network veins uh, on the leaf. And when you go further, involves the work of microscopy these are the vascular bundles going to look like for the monocots you see Can you see that the smiley faces here these are the vascular bundles okay so they have their phloems and the xylem that conducts um, water and nutrients throughout the plants okay so i just want you to recall this and so you got your vascular bundle and you're going to get your xylem to conduct water, and then you're going to get your phloem to conduct um, your your fruit. Uh, you, not your fruit, your food, uh, your nutrients, your, the, the, the sugar. Okay, so please recall this. Okay, and then these are the flowers um, structure for the uh, respective monocot and dicot. Um, Let's have a closer look at this. So these are the, the monocot um, seed uh, stages. So look at this monocot uh, seed. Uh, this is a corn. It has got the food reserve, which is called the endosperm, and the cotyledon, the coleoptile. So the coleoptile is the, um, the covering sheath for the plumule. Sheath. Sheath is the cover cover or cap for the plumule remember the plumule will become the um uh, the, the the shoot part of the plant and then um you have your radical the sheath for the radical it's called um coleoriza coleoriza but it's not shown here and this is for the radical, the cap for the radical. 
the cap for the sheath is uh is the coleoptile and for the radical it's the uh, colorizer you can see here as for the monocot seeds as the seeds germinate um the plumule is going to emerge and the radical as well yeah and then you're going to get a uh, leaf the first true leaf uh, emerging out of the soil but notice that the seed itself stays in the ground okay it's not um it's not living it's not um um uh, moving but the shoot does which is contrasting for uh, the dicot because the dicot as it germinates the radical is going to um come out just like the the monocot plants and then you're going to got to get your uh, plumule that give rise to to your shoot however the the, the the seed structure here you know remember the seed code the, the, the test and so on will be pushed outward it will grow outside as well it's not it's not left inside the soil just like the um, the monocot so for this germination later on you will see that this is called um with a special name uh which is uh for, for we call it as the epigeal epigeal and hypogeal germination okay <clears throat> epigeal germination meanings that um, the hypocotyl elongates and it's it's contrasting you will have a, um, a look um, in a bit and for the hypogeal it's the epicotyl that germinates the, the elongates epicotyl okay so um please get this right for the seed structure draw your seeds draw the structure okay so this is the seed and this is the seed coat and then you got the cotyledon um, the difference between the two, the two is this has been a cross section, okay? Cross section. And this is a whole seed. Okay? So inside the cross section, you got the cotyledon, the baby leaves, and you got the plumule, and you got the radical. A micropile is the opening, actually, in which the pollen tube gets in and fertilizes the egg cells. Okay. So um, in hum in in human, um, I think that there, there is um, an equivalent um, structure. Oh, um, it's called um, the, the it's the the cervix, like the, the the in the human. Okay. So this is the human, in which uh, the pollen tube gets in and do the fertilization, and that is the micropyle. Okay. Um, endospermous and non endospermous um i have said this earlier but uh, this is the the official terminologies for this if the plants have this endosperm we call it endospermous seeds like um the grass the monocot yeah many monocot like got this um example like the rice and uh, corn non endospermous meaning that um when you cross section the seed it hasn't got um clear endosperm you only see the cotyledon okay like like usually what you see in dicot um, and the example includes like the bean seeds okay so let's have a look this is the bean endospermous or not endospermous can you see the endosperm no but you can see the cotyledon so automatically this is not endospermous and that is the plumule Okay, and this is the um, LS. Uh, LS is the longitudinal section. Longitudinal section. LS. Um, the, the section along lengthwise. Okay, and so since you can see clearly the endosperm, 
you still you still have your cotyledon okay and um in in grass sometimes they call cotyledon as the scutellum so this is um like um the synonym scutellum is a great word it means um shield And also, you know, this is a um, uh, monocot cyst because of this aileron layer. Aileron layer is um, uh, is the yellow layer here. I hope you can see it clearly. Yeah, so it surrounds the entire seeds. Okay, the aileron layer. The aileron layer is pretty much not doing anything until the seed uh, germinates. Okay. Um, I just want to see, um, uh, let's see, it seems like so many people try to admit. Okay, I try to admit. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So up to that, that is the, um, endospermous and, um, uh, non-endospermous. Um, uh, uh, the next slide is just to, to have a quick recap for you. Okay, I think for for up to the seed introduction, that is all that you need to know up to this point. Okay, any questions so far? Are you good? Okay, I'm going to divide this lecture into small sections, okay? Because I want you to be able to absorb everything. Okay, uh, so this slide is like a, the summary slide uh, for it. For the endospermic and non endospermic. Are you good? Okay, nobody's trying to enter. All right, okay, we'll try to um, continue again. Let's see. So, seed um, dormancy, um, it's actually the condition when the seed's basically being a sleeping beauty. It just sleeps. Um, it is not the same as being dead. It is not dead. It is pretty much alive but in a very deep hibernation okay so the seeds can be um, become dormant when it not receives um, sufficient water oxygen and also the optimum temperature okay and recall from your practical last week um, why we put your seat right next to the window okay you need, you need the water to break the seat dormancy and also optimum temperature if it is cold nothing gonna happen okay remember the heat heat equals energy energy means to activate your seat so um dormancy can be seen in seeds like uh, the legumes mean the beans and also any other uh, food storage okay so um, other food storage like the tuber, like the potato, can also become dormant. Okay, so dormancy can happen to any organs. Okay, but now we are interested with seeds. So yeah, that's what we're talking about right now. So lack of oxygen causes the dormancy. Dryness causes the dormancy. Presence of substance that inhibit germination also dormancy. Okay, some some plant hormones um, does inhibit um, germination when they are abundant your seeds are not going to germinate. Okay, um, it's a resting stage. Uh, it can occur in um, any safe stage of, of, of an organism. Can you become dormant when you are an adult? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, if, if you can resist being hungry and not eating, yeah, you can, you can become, become dormant. Okay, in fact, um, sleeping actually is a form of dormancy because um, you're pretty much you know, not eating and just functioning very minimally. Your heart rate goes very down, your blood pressure comes down and you are breathing very slowly. Okay, and a dormancy is Im important because in nature, conditions are not favorable all the time and this is not good for the growth and development of um, any organism so and um, not until um, the perfect situations have arrived plants will stay dormant when the conditions is okay then um, the dormancy will be broken and the plants will start to grow and develop um, appropriately 
So they are, this is just a summary. What happens during the seed's dormancy? Metabolism will fall. Number of organelles inside the cell also fall. Dehydration. There is water, but not so much. Uh, vacuoles. Um, vacuoles is the food reserve inside the cells. Remember, you don't really see vacuoles are very visible inside the um, animal cells, but in plant cells, you can see that very very clearly. However, it's going to deflate, it looks very flat uh, during dormancy. For reason, become dense and crystalline bodies. Um, yeah, uh, this is because uh, related to the dehydration. Okay, so it, it, everything becomes dries up and uh, crystallized. Okay, so to, to break dormancy, what do you need? Okay, of course, you need um, a form of light and energy. You need you need the light, the sunlight, okay? Again, the reason why you put your seeds at specific location, okay? You don't put your seeds away from the window, okay? And also the fluctuating temperature, okay? And this is true for the Four Seasons country. Uh, when you have this fluctuating temperature, um, have you ever heard that, um, you know, like a rock? You have a rock. At night, you have the rock cold. And at um, during the, the night time, the, the daytime is going to be hot. So hot and cold repeatedly will cause the, the surface of a structure to contract. Contract and then eventually it would break. And the same concept um, is happening here. The, the seed coat, the tester can undergo cold and hot um, temperature fluctuation causing the contraction and the breaking of the seed uh, coating and that's how the seed will can start uh, germinate. Chemicals uh, such as nitrate in the soil or applied hormones uh, like the um, gibberellins can also break the dormancy. Okay, Dormancy is, is um, in prevalent when uh, one hormone, uh, ABA, ABA. Uh, you, we will learn about a hormone later. I just want to have to, to give you a heads up. Um, it's called abscisic acid. When this hormone is a lot, seeds become dormant. Okay. When you have less of this, of this and lots of gibberellin, seeds will germinate. So it's the ratio between the two, and also fire. Some seeds um, require fire in order to break the dormancy, okay? Uh, particularly, um, not only to get more energy, but also to break the, the seed coating. So, okay. Um, so this is um, what, what I have said uh, just now, just, just a further um, elaboration about the seeds that require the light, alternating temperature, and also the requirement of, of fire. Okay, so this is part of the nature uh, processes, and um, when when it's not happening um, regularly, you can imitate or copy the environment uh, inside the controlled um, chamber. Uh, when seeds do not care whether it's natural or not, as long as they have the the germi germinating um, uh, factors whether it's artificial or natural, they will germinate, okay? So to maintain dormancy, this is what the seed do. Uh, the seed coats, it's waxy, so it's waterproof to water and oxygen. It's dehydrated, so all the food reserve become crystalline. No chemical reactions, biochemical reactions taking place. And there are the presence of um, some chemicals inside the seed. So these chemicals even further uh, prevent the uh, chemical reactions from happening and growth promoters like the gibberellin acid gibberellin acid is, is uh, uh, not present okay so break your um these are basically um the the steps in the seeds um germinating it, it needs to break the dormancy first before it can germinate so the abrasion of the seed coat, meaning that uh, the friction action against the seed, causing the seed to scar. 
and in fact there is a, a technique for that scarification you injure the seat mechanically and physically to allow the seat coat to break so that the oxygen and water can have access okay and of course uh, when water have access the rehydration uh, will take place and this will technically wake up all the chemical reactions okay inside the seats and then and of of course it's 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 like a domino effect you turn on one switch the rest of the domino blocks will will will, will fall down and the rest of the switches will turn on as well okay so um during uh, so radical will come out through the seeds so to break the dormancy um you need to be dry and cold alternatively okay uh yeah i i put this um just to i have said this um, earlier just to help you to recall okay um how to break the dormancy you need to do the scarification and how to make it as uh the, the seat coat um uh, gets broken down depending on the the nature of the seats whether the seat is thick seats or the thin seats okay and then um insufficient development um yeah remember okay it's, it's the smallest seat in the world right small seats on the planet no endosperm and yet orchid most most orchid is monocot so you 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 might you might wonder um why why um the seats is um Sorry, uh, let me get this correct again. Okay, why the orchid seeds um, is not having the endosperm, even though it's a monocot? Yeah, that's why it's the smallest. It omits one structure. So where does it get the food reserve for the orchid seeds? Because the absence of this uh, food reserve in orchids it hasn't got any endosperm, it needs to have these um, soil fungus association, like the mycorrhiza. So the, 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 the fungus will become the roots and the food provider for the seeds. If you, if you learn um, the orchid um, culture later, if you take that um, subject, you will learn that most of the time, most of the propagation for the orchid takes place by either um, vegetative cutting or tissue culture very super seldom people grow orchids by using the seeds because a specific species of um, orchid can only have specific association with a fungus if the the specific fungus is absent the orchid seed will not germinate so you can imagine how that's going to happen it's almost impossible for for the the fungus uh sorry for the orchid seeds to germinate while waiting for the fungus to 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 turn turns up okay so that's why um in orchid people do lots of digital culture and vegetative propagation okay all right okay and dormancy also um caused by the inhibitors so we leach, leach away the inhibitors like the aba by range and for example is the cactus okay Germination. So these are the um, uh, the stages for germination. We've got the pre-germination events, the germination itself, and the, what happens after, which is the post-germination. So pre-germination, and this is the things that happens after you have um, scarred your your seeds, and so the water and oxygen comes in. You get the rehydration. And when this happened, the RNA, remember your biology RNA stands for ribonucleic, ribonucleic acids. OK, 
okay, app gets activated and the protein synthesis starts. And this will increase the metabolism, respiration, and so on. If I ask you, does photosynthesis happen here? No, no photosynthesis happen, even though chloroplasts might be present somewhere inside the seeds. No photosynthesis just yet. All the foods comes from the, the food reserve, okay? And then the hydrolysis will take place, the, the, the digestion of the food reserve. Remember, um, in the earlier slides, I showed you the, the monocotyledon seeds. Yeah, and then you got this alluron layer. Sorry, my drawing is not that perfect. The alluron layer. And then you got your food reserve here, your endosperm. And then you got your alluron layer. So this is the function of alluron layer. Alluron layer, the cells will um, divide and differentiate and then release digestive enzyme. This digestive enzyme will migrate to the endosperm um, to break down starch and lipid so that the growing embryo can have a delicious food. Yeah, and that this will kicks um, kicks up the, um, the, um, the 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 entire cell division and cell growth. And then you're going to get your germination, the rupture of the seed coat, and you're going to get your radical and also your plumule. Even though it's usually radical first, it depends. Actually, some some seeds um, the first structure that comes out is not the radical, but rather the plumule. Yeah, I think you, um, the good example here is rice because rice can have um, aerobic germination and also anaerobic genesis, anaerobic germination. For aerobic germination, meaning there is lots of oxygen, um, what do you think going to come out? Radical or female? <clears throat> so when there is um, lots of oxygen usually the, the the plumule will come up first when it's anaerobic meaning that um the rice is completely soaked there is no need to um i'm oh, sorry no 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 it, it's the other way well this is the radical first the aerobic radical when there is lots of oxygen the radical will come up first just like uh, the one here usually radical come up the aerobic but in anaerobic condition, not many um, seeds can um, grow anaerobically. Rice is one of them. The uh, plumule will come up first. So the plumule will act as a snorkel. You know, in search for the extra gas so that the rice seeds can germinate faster and further. Okay, and then you're going to get your post-germination, you got the growth of the root and shoot, and or the transfer of the food storage to the growing um, part. And then you're going to get the, the senescence of the food uh, storage, okay? And senescence, the aging doesn't mean that the, the, your plant is about to die. No, this means that the seed structure is about to be um, non-functioning, okay? Um, just just like you, the, the placenta, when the baby is out, is the baby keeping the placenta until they keep the garden? No, the father will 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 will. Re I mean, like, not the father. The doctor will remove, cut off the placenta, and then throw the placenta away, right? And then bury that, of course. Okay, the baby do not go um, along to the school with the placenta. That is not happening. Yeah. So that is the the senescing, the aging of the food storage. Okay. So no longer you see the food storage. Yeah, yeah. So this is your seeds, uh, and we know that this is the aerobic germination, meaning that um, the germination takes place in the presence of oxygen. Why? Because you get your radical coming out. Where is your plumule coming soon? Soon after this, you're going to get your plumule. The plumule is going to come up. Okay. What are these? These are the root hairs. Oops, sorry. 
so um, this is more like um, what happens at the cellular level. So you got your mitochondria reconstituted. See the word reconstituted, reconstituted, meaning that in your seeds, your sleeping and dormant seed, you have organelles, but the organelles are underdeveloped. But with the presence of water and oxygen and so on, the development of the organelles will continue and it, they will become functioning. And then only your germination and cell division will take place. Okay, so and then you're going to get your respiration. Um, initially anaerobic, yeah, while well, the seed is sleeping, it's, that's not enough oxygen. And later on, um, with the breaking of the seed coat, you are going to get uh, loss of oxygen and water inside and the germination will become aerobic. And of course, um, ATP will be used because this requires lots of energy. RNA gets activated. Why, why people keep mentioning about this RNA? Why? Because RNA makes protein. That's the signal. It's the signal. When one thing happens, other things will happen from RNA. Okay, you see? And then you got your protein synthesis. What kind of protein? Protein that helps your, your embryo to, to grow. Protein that helps your plimule to become bigger and, uh, and, and more uh, mature. Okay. And then you can get your DNA synthesis. Of course, when you divide the cells, of course, you're going to get um, DNA synthesis. Basically, you are making um, the replication of your DNA. And this is the relative time frame here. Yeah, I'll put here 0.5 hours, 45 hours, and so on. Then you got your mitosis. Okay. Um, remember the endosperm, the food reserve. So the food reserve inside the endosperm, these are basically the, the starch, um, the lipid, and so on. However, these must be broken down first before um, the embryo can utilize it. So it needs to be mobilized. Okay. And, and this is uh, pretty much uh, affected by the contents of the enzyme. That's why RNA needs to get activated. RNA gets activated, more enzyme will be synthesized and more of the foods can be broken down and then mobilized to, to the uh, needed uh, location. Okay, so these are the uh, a bit detailed what happens inside. So there is starch in your endosperm. Okay, and then these alpha amylase will break down the starch and then you get lots of maltose. When there is a lot of maltose presence already inside your seeds, this will give a negative feedback and prevent the amylase from getting transcribed by the RNA. Okay. Okay, so this is um, something uh, to, to, to bear in mind. Okay, so uh, the, the, the point is, um, this feedback is occurring so that um, the release of the food storage is adjusted to the suited demand. So more growth will cause more um, amylase, will cause more melters. What, but when there is lots of melters, you don't really need lots of amylase. So the, fit, the signal will be sent, so a mileage production is um, uh, minimized. Okay, so these are the things I already mentioned. This we got a carbohydrate, proteins, and lipids, and these are the um, enzymes that break them down to produce this food for the baby, the, the, the embryo, maltose, amino acid, fatty acid, and glycerol. Okay. Okay, they need to be hydrolyzed first. Okay, okay. if uh, wh why you might you might think why can't they be in this form already from the beginning inside inside the food reserve? Why can't they be the glucose amino acids inside the food reserve? Why need to undergo all these steps? Well, that's because these things are very unstable. Okay, they get oxidized very quickly, especially glucose. Okay. You don't want to prevent them from turning bad. So you turn them into a much stable molecule, meaning the complex molecule, so um, so that uh, they, they can be used uh, for longer. 
Okay. So that's a small animation here. What's going to happen? What triggering the germination to happen? So you've got lots of ABA and then there is come the rain. The rain will wash out the ABA and then you're going to get lots of gibberellic acids. Okay. And this will enable the um, dormant seeds to germinate. Okay. And then after the seeds takes up the water, uh, GA, the gibberellic acid is released. And this will signal the aileron layer to produce um, all the digestive enzyme. Okay. For example, like the amylase. So the hydrolyse, the hydrolysis will take place and the nutrient in the endosperm can be broken down and available for the plants. And then the nutrient, like you, what you saw earlier, like the sugars, lipid and so on, will move to the scutellum. You know, uh, this is monocot, of course, it's called scutellum. And then consume uh, by the seedling during germination. And then the seedling will start to grow the root because, well, lots of food now, lots of energy, and then grow the shoot as well. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this is just a summary of what happens. So, barley seeds, remember, um, you have your seed coat, the fruit, the fruit itself, the fruit and the seeds of the uh, the plant group like the grass is, is the same, okay? They, they are part of the similar structure. Got the endosperm, the food reserve, and that is the embryo, that is the shoot expects, uh, which becomes the plumule. Okay, also we call it scutellum for the monocot. Okay, and then you've got the water coming in from um, this part here, which is the micropile. Yeah. Okay, and then the starch inside the endosperm will be broken down through the action of hydrolysis. And then you're going to get your sugar, for example, like the maltose, and very high in energy. Okay, and then at the aileron layer, we'll make more hydrolysis, hydrolyzing enzyme, so that you get more sugar, and also make um, digestive uh, enzyme like the, the proteinase to break down the protein. And then you get your amino acids, and then also this trigger the DNA to replicate uh, through the action of transcription, of course. Get your RNA translation and and the rest of it, and then you get your enzyme, get your amino acids, and then the exocytosis. Exo exocytosis is the breaking down of the um, the exoskeleton. Um, of this um, cytosis is the breaking down of a cell. Okay, X, um, and then you going to get uh, the growth. Okay. okay? All the foods, sugar, will mobilize. This is the mobilization takes place. And then you get the growth. Okay. And then the GA, the gibberellic acid, will kick up even further. And then that will promote the, the growth. Okay. And then the GA also will send signal to our DNA to, to make more of this until all of this has been used up and this is big enough. Capsella seeds. Okay, this is just uh, the cross-section of a real seed. Uh, Capsella is um, from the same family as the mustard. Uh, I don't I don't think we got the seeds around here. Uh, but it is the, the family of mustard, the brassica seed. Okay, seed coat, that's the micropile. Okay, can you guess what that is? This structure here, can you guess? Oops. That's the endosperm. Okay, and then where is the embryo? Way up here. And then that's the shoot apex. And then you got the cotyledons. Yeah, see, this is two cotyledons. One, two. So we know that this is dicot. 
okay? And then we're going to have the hypocotyl. Okay, hypocotyl is the, the stem um, down the dicot, uh, down the down down the cotyledon. Okay. And then you got your radical, and then you're going to get your root apex. Okay. Um, earlier we saw the, the germination for the um, monocosids. Now we look at the, the germination for the dicosids from the lettuce. You got a seed coat, and can you guess what structure is this? It should be your bryo. And then you got your radical apex. And then you've got your cotyledon, your dicot, two cotyledons. And then you've got your shoot apex right above. And then the water going to come in from the micropile, the opening, through the action of water imbibition. Uh, this will trigger the DNA um, activation, transcription. You're going to get your RNA. The RNA will translate, you get your protein which is alpha amylase. Amylase is an enzyme. Enzyme is a protein. Please remember that. And then the amylase will break down what? The starch. And then the product will be the sugar. Okay, through the action of hydrolysis. What sugar are we talking about here? We're talking about, um, earlier we talked about the maltose. It can be other form of sugar, of course. And then the sugar will give the energy for the um, cotyledon to grow. Okay, and now there is a phytochrome. Okay, I would like to tell you about this. The phytochrome is actually um, a light receptor um, for some seeds. Not all seeds have uh, needs this uh, phytochrome. Okay, so um, phytochrome uh, will sense whether the correct red light is present or not because when it is active, P Phytochrome is a is a is a protein. Okay, it's the it's a receptor. Receptor. Okay. Where where is it? It's on the surface of the cells. Okay, it's photoreversible, meaning that depending on the type of light that hits it, it can become either active or not. Okay. And yeah, so when you talk about um red, red color of light has different quality. Um, if it's um, regular red, like the red that I'm writing now, um, the energy content of it in the form of lambda, lambda here is 660 nanometer. But as the red becomes deeper to the point you can't really see the red, but your camera can, we call it um, far red. And the the corresponding lambda for the wavelength is 730 nanometer. Okay. okay. So we'll see. Um, this is very important to activate um, uh, the, this uh, germination. Okay. So I put here um, extra slide to, to tell you about this uh, phytochrome thing. So phytochrome has two, two, two um, situation. It can be active. This is the active one, P, F, R, and inactive. This is the symbol, P, R. Active uh, meaning that um, it will stimulate seed germination, stomatal opening, and control. And how to activate the um, phytochrome? You need the red light. And this is present in sunshine or any artificial light for that matter that can give this kind of um, 660 nanometer of energy. In the far red light, basically in the dark, you see when you go into the dark, just because you cannot see, doesn't mean that there is no light present. Some light still present, but your retina is not sensitive enough to perceive the signal, okay? In the dark of the forest, the far red light is more dominant. So this will cause the phytochrome to become inactive. Uh, this is the symbol. So as long as the phytochrome in the on the seed um, cell surface in this PR or inactive form, the seed will not germinate. But the moment 
we can I can grow you. This is the forest, and this is your seeds. Most of the time, the phytochrome is in the form of PR. But let's say that suddenly there is a very naughty monkey breaking down the tree here. Wait, so when it breaks down, suddenly the lights can come in. When the light comes in, you get your red light, 660 nanometer. When you get your red light, the inactive phytochromes now become active phytochrome, PFR. And when this happens, you will get this response, seed germination, stomach opening, and so on. Okay. So germination of seeds, and yeah, um, this is just a, a, a recap. So this is basically what happened. Uh, you need to utilize uh, your storage food reserve. Okay. So, and then um, the compounds which have been broken down uh, need to be supported, uh, channeled to the embryo so that it can grow. And then they, the embryo will start to elongate and all the structure, epicotin, hypocotin, and so on will uh, become uh, bigger. So, um, this is the germination of a bean. So, this is your seed. Okay. And then this is the original seeds. You can see that um, the radical come out and then the hypocotyl will start to elongate, pushing the cotyledon out of it. Okay, hypocotyl means that the stem right down the cotyledon. Epicotyl is the stem um, above this cotyledon, okay? This is the first true leaf, even though we call cotyledon is the baby leaf, but it's not the true leaf. The true leaf is the one that um, that you get uh, on, on the outside. Yeah. So um, we know that this is the dicot plants, of course. After the seedling has established like this, you get these withered cotyledons. This is the senescent um, seeds that I was talking about earlier. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so this is uh, basically what happens, should emerges because of exposure to the light, chlorophyll is produced, okay, and then the seed will start to photosynthesizing because you've got this true leaf, okay, no longer dependent on the food reserve, cotyledon is not needed, and even if it's needed, it cannot provide any more food because it's already withered and senescent and pretty, pretty, mu pretty much uh, non-functioning now, okay. If stored reserves are consumed before photosynthesis, the seedling will die. Okay, we know that these seedlings manage to utilize all the food inside the cotyledon, and then manage to create functioning leaf because functioning leaf can photosynthesize and make its own food. Okay, if this thing is happening, meaning that the food reserve has been consumed, but you still not manage to make any new leaf, yeah, the seed will die basically. Okay, okay, how do you um, grow this, uh, um, quantify the seed uh, establishment? Uh, these are the things. Actually, we um, we can do this in the lab. I do not know how that's going to take place now. Um, haven't have, uh, had a good plan just yet, uh, but we will try to do this experiment later. So we have the length, the fresh weight, and the dry weight okay, of, of the seedlings. Yeah, remember? You, you, you uh, saw your um, seedlings? Yeah. We'll discuss about that later, how that's going to happen. Okay, and uh, finally is the core, the type of germination. Okay, so a radical will come out and then we we categorize germination into two types, the epigeal germination and hypogeal germination. Epigeal germination meaning that cotyledon appear above the ground. So this is the one for the Dicot. Yeah. In contrast to the hypogeal germination, meaning that uh, for the monocot. Epigeal germination refer actually this refer to the, the, the final location for the cot cotyledon. If the cotyledon um, somewhat outside the earth. Sorry, sorry. This is a um, crude representation of it. Then you've got your leaf. This is your cotyledon. 
then this is the epigeal. If it's hypogeal, your cotyledon, your seeds stay inside the ground. Okay. All right. To remember this, epi means, um, let me see what's happening outside. Um, okay. Epi means um, above, above, above the ground. Geals mean epi geal. Geal is referring to the geal, to the earth. Epi is the above. So where is the cotyledon now? Is it above the ground or below the ground? It's below the ground, hypogeal. If it's above the ground, it's epigeal. And this is contrasting um, to the um, elongation of the um, uh, epigotic and hypogeal. So um, this is the representation again. You got your hypogotyl. You see, when the hypogotyl is the ones that is um, germinating, you are basically going to push out the cotyledon out of the ground. And you're going to get something like this. In contrast, if your um, hypocotyl is not pushing anything out, but your epicotyl is the one pushing, um, pushing out here, so you're going to get your seed stay in the ground. <clears throat> so, epicotyl elongate you the germination is hypo gel okay when hypo cotyl elongate you get epi gel germination so it's it's uh, contrasting okay so get this right okay hypo cotyl elongate you get epi gel germination Apicotyl elongates, you get hypogeal germination. Okay, so these are to help you with the summary uh, what is hypocotyl and what is hypocotyl, and um, it's what's happening during the germination. Okay, okay, uh, you can have a look about this later. So, hypocotyl is basically part of the stem of embryo beneath the stalk of the seed leaf. Seed leaf is the cotyledon, it's below the cotyledon. Okay. And directly above the roots. Okay. Starts from the radical terminate at the cotyledon. So it elongates in the epigeal germination. See, in the epigeal germination, hypocotyl elongates. It's contrasting the name. Do not ever call hypocotyl uh, elongation cause hypogeal germination. No, it's the opposite. Remember that. Okay. Uh, for the epicotyl, it's the opposite. So it elongates um, uh, in the hypogeal germination. And therefore, you're going to get your cotyledon in the soil, just like the corn, just like the rice. And then this is like your mung mon bean, your green bean. Okay. So, um, as I would like to do um, to summarize this, so this is the conclusion. For, for your lecture today. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for today. Uh, you have learned about uh, the seeds, what seeds are all about, um, the, the common structure of the seeds, and also the, um, the things that cause the, sleep, uh, the seeds to sleep, which is the dormancy, and how to break the dormancy once it is broken, the germination will take place. And then what, what are the factors that are controlling this? And also you, you have learned about the germination itself. And uh, there are two types of germination, the hypogeal and epigeal germination. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's all uh, for the lesson today. <clears throat> all right. Any question? Very good. Anybody want to come in? I'm sorry, doctor. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Let's say uh, we are having 
a fresh fruit or mango example uh-huh. and yeah absolutely we don't we, 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 we would not eat the sweet right but what is the uh best method if us we want to make it uh at our home to germinate the mango seed like i think we can't germinate it directly to the uh to the soil maybe there is other method that we need to apply first mm-hmm. before we germinate it okay okay um do you like your mango very much most likely to. okay okay um if you like the mango my advice is not to grow it using the seeds because there is no guarantee you will get the same sweet and lovable mango because the mango has been um, undergoing cross fertilization so the resultant baby mango may be not exactly the same that what you have eaten okay this is breeding breeding if 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 you like your mango so much um the the advice is to to propagate your mango using using a vegetative um uh propagation method yeah but if you for the sake of science you still want to grow your mango from the seeds you can um i don't have a mango with me but i have okay let's say that this is your mango the mango it's very hard right the seeds the seed the seed this is the seed of your mango so um if you take these seeds and directly put it in the ground very likely that if it germinates it's going to take maybe one month or two months it's not going to germinate so what you can do is the the the, the woody mango seeds that you have break it you need to slice it and break it and open it then it is like a pouch and then whatever inside take it out going to get something like this 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 is the part of of the um the mango that you can grow so this mango uh part the the, the seeds the the inside of the seed if you germinate it's, it's going to be very fast maybe three days time you're going to get your mango rather than if you if you plant the whole wooden mango seeds um the they call it droop, droop i think inside the soil so slice it open bring the internal of the seed out and then germinate this and then you're going to get your mango very quickly but there is no guarantee it's going to be if it grows it's going to turn to be a um, sweet mango uh, uh, because uh, fertilization can cancel out all the goodness does that answer your question yes doctor okay um Any more question? Are we good? Are we not good? What's the time now? 9.30? Okay, I can I can bear on for another 10 minutes. Okay, I need to know, um, you can think about what you want to ask. Uh, what's going to happen to your practical? Can, can somebody tell me um, until when you're going to not to be able to come? 5th April. 5th April. So 5th of April, let me see, when is it? In two weeks, for two weeks. Hmm. So meaning that on the 7th, you can come to the lab. Is that correct? Yes, doctor. If there is no oh. changes. Okay, okay. So, so we just need to, to, to skip this one lap up. Okay. So, um, I think not to worry. Um, we can continue with, with our practical. I will ask, uh, the lab assistant to take, to, to care, to take care of your plants and grow them. If they are too big, maybe I will ask them to do the reporting for your, um, corn plants. Okay. So that you can learn. Um, you need to have the hands-on experience. I I heard that uh, you are in first year, but 
your first semester entirely online. No practical whatsoever. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. No wonder korang belas macam. Okay, so um, yeah, so I I I I I'm sorry that uh, things are not very optimum now, but we'll try to make the best out of it. Okay, have this hands-on experience because you need to develop your psychomotor. Learning things online is not really going to make it um very very long. I mean, like you need to to work your 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 psychomotor. Um, okay. Um, um, I am thinking to to have some uh, like a, we we have the lecture, correct? We have the lecture. We have the um, lab sessions. <clears throat> I know that uh, physiology can be very tough, and um, not just physiology. I mean, like other other subjects as well. So. Um, Depending on the time that I am available, I will let you know um, um, in the group. I will set aside maybe um, like half an hour or maybe uh, one hour on, on certain day, most probably at night, so that you um, I'll just be online and then you can um, ask um, questions okay, regarding your um, the things that you are not sure about. I mean, like it doesn't have to be like the physiology. You can ask other other questions from other subjects as well. I mean, like it's, it's not like I, I I don't ever teach um other other subjects. For example, like um what do you learn um this semester? Uh, what are you taking? Chemistry. Chemistry. Whoa. Okay. okay. For example, you don't understand the concept of normality. And you're like, oh, what, 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 what my lecturer is saying is, is not very clear. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but try to, to keep it to the uh, crop physiology. I don't want other people to be, um, to, 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 to tell that I'm, I'm stealing their, their thunders. Okay, I'm just trying to, to, to help um, you. Um, I know it's very, it's very tough uh, learning, learning online. Okay. Um, since we cannot change that but i can be more available for your access i think that can somehow very helpful right yeah okay so um no question okay um, um uh, yes doctor i yeah. have some questions yeah. for last week mm. uh, last week we learned about the mental medical expression right we learned about the uh, crop growth rate, which uh, we uh -uh. thought about the unit area, right? The unit uh -uh. we're using is in cm or meter. Um, doesn't doesn't matter. It depends on um the uh, the the equipment that you are using, and also the nature of the leaf. Some leaf is very big, so uh, for example, like the banana leaf. Mm -hmm. So usually people don't use um, cent square centimeter for that. It is very big, and the equipment also very big. We you have to actually use a machine to to get the leaf area. But for small leaf like the, um, for example, like the the mung bean, the green bean leaf, it's very small. It's very small, and maybe you can use your your, your phone to 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 take a picture of it. Usually the unit is much smaller square centimeter yeah yeah, yeah. It, actually it can be even smaller than that um square millimeter uh, for 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 a very small culture of tissue yeah. okay and another question is uh for the seed corn seed we planted for last week why we use the seed that coated with the tiram fungicide but not the normal seed oh um, I think I think I've I've uh, it's alright. Um, the seeds uh, of some plants they have their natural enemy. Okay, a problem for one plant is not the problem for other plants. Okay, so the enemy, the 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 more common, the more prominent enemy for corn seeds apparently is fungus. Okay, 
and fungus is not the real enemy for coconut so you don't need to treat coconut seeds with tiram the fungicide because naturally the coconut doesn't does, doesn't bother yeah yeah so um to prevent the seeds from being eaten or being degraded by its natural enemy it can be fungus it can be insect it can be uh, you know any any pest we we treat it with the corresponding um uh, control like the fungicide okay thank you doctor sure are we good <clears throat> um i'll be around until 9 40 okay then after that we can dismiss the class so in the meantime you can ask whatever you want to ask from earth to heaven Uh, yes. Uh, about the uh, so, if we use uh, red light, for example, mm -hmm. we put, we put mm -hmm. this, uh, red light, so it will grow faster. But if we use other uh, light, for example, wood green. Mm -hmm. Is it more? Is it more? Two minutes faster than zero light. Um. So your question is, um, if is it, um, is the seed is going to grow faster if you use other color of light compared to red light? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Um. I do not know how far you have learned your physics with like. Okay. Um. Some. If, if some of you comes from um, strong physics background, then that's all right. This, this is very, very heavy physics actually, but, but um, I'll try my best to, to, to tell you. Okay, um, we have our eyes, okay? So our eyes, um, the retina, the retina cells of our eyes, um, God has made it in such a way that it's going to be sensitive for a specific wavelength of energy only between 400 nanometers to 700 nanometer nanometer is the wavelength the lambda okay wavelength um i'll make it this smaller yeah wavelength nanometer <clears throat> so if you have a strip of a uh, color like your your um, rainbow so this is 400 nanometer and this is 700 nanometer this would be the blue color the value of the energy is 400 nanometer but we cannot see the wavelength going like that no we cannot see that but we can see in the form of color when it, so whenever you see color blue, like if you look at the sky, you know that the amount of energy is 400 nanometer. 700 nanometer is the red. Okay. So when it comes to germination, it's not the color that caused the seeds to grow faster or slower. The concept of uh, phytochrome that you saw earlier is solely for the purpose of activation okay so most of the time the phytochrome is inactive yeah p remember from your lecture um let me let me show you the lecture again where is that thing this one, 
inactive. P R. Most of the time, most is life. Your seat, um, your seat, uh, your lettuce sits inside the fridge. It's inactive. Uh, so the phytochrome in this form. But the moment red light of 660 nanometer, maybe somewhere here. 660 nanometer. This region, you can imagine that this is the region of um, uh, the rainbow, okay? So there is a different shades of red. Some are pink, some are light, some are deep red, including the blue. Some are blue, some are yellow, all the way until you change to the uh, other color, the gradual increment, um, like, like the rainbow. Okay, so the moment sun, um, any light, doesn't have to be sunlight, is shown upon a seat, your light, this is your seat, your light can contain all of this color, full spectrum, but the phytochrome doesn't care about other color, it only care about this. The moment it detects this, your phytochrome from inactive form will become the active form. And when this has become activated, this will cause your seeds to germinate because of the activation of um, lots of um, chemical um, and biochemical reactions. Okay, so what if you give a uh, green? Nothing happened green color is not going to activate your seeds and not all seeds require this okay only some some seeds some seeds um uh, require phytochrome not, but not all seeds some seeds can germinate completely in darkness like um rice seeds if you put rice seeds on the um uh wet uh, paper uh, uh in a dark cupboard it's going to germinate in, in a few days and of course, after that, it's going to require light for photosynthesis. Okay. All right. That's the answer to your question. Thank you. Arthur. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's all for today. Uh, 940, 943 already. Uh, you can, um, yeah, I think you can, we can dismiss now. And um, whoever um, recorded the video, can you email me the link or something? Um, so that uh, I can put on the Putra Blast later. My Putra Blast, for some reason, I cannot access it easily. It keeps um, kicking me out of it. Uh, UPM's T system is just not stable sometimes. All right. So that's all for today. And I'll see you on, on uh, Wednesday online. Don't have to go. Okay. Um, I will think of a way to, to, to bring the lab materials to you. All right. <clears throat> okay, so that's all. Uh, I'll see you later.